It was either a crazy twist of fate or a complete fluke. But this week, I found myself in the middle of a truly astonishing event. Looking up at one of the vintage chandeliers outside my cottage, I noticed something unusual. Have a look. A queen ant. At first, just one. But soon, I saw another. And more appeared at the chandelier. In case you've never seen a queen ant, they look like this. Fully winged and ready to mate. You see, these winged virgin queen ants had waited their whole lives for this very night to emerge from their nests in hopes to fulfill their ultimate destiny. To mate and become the queen mothers of their own ant colonies. But in order for that to happen, the queens needed male ants. Now, where are they? I looked around. There's one there on the wall. The male ants look more like wasps. And another, sadly caught in that spider web. He's not going to be mating tonight, unless he somehow manages to wriggle free from there before that spider bites him. But it was strange to me that there were only two male ants at this site, where several readily available bachelorette queen ants were gathered. Where could the males be? But then, back at my room, as I was about to go to bed, I happened to discover that turning on my cell phone light began to create an astonishing commotion. As I saw the swarm the light drew in, my eyes widened when I realized I had our answer. A massive swarm of male ants gathered round, all following the light to direct them towards their own destiny of finding the queens and passing on their genes to the next generation. These males too had waited their entire lives to emerge from the nest on this fateful night. Every male ant here would all be dead by morning, so it was absolutely imperative that they found their queens to mate with on this last night of their lives. The sight of all these eager male ants was appalling and truly captivating as more and more males gathered around the light. And it was at that moment that I knew exactly what I needed to do. Oh, beloved male ants, I have exactly what you're looking for. Come here! Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy! AC family, I now had a ton of virgin queen ants and eager virgin males in a jar. Now this method of sticking male and queen reproductives, or alates as they're called in science, into a single container and hoping they'll mate doesn't typically guarantee they'll breed, but it was worth a shot. Now guys, what I saw in the morning was truly shocking. Stay tuned for that surprise coming up. But before that, some of you may be wondering, what was a huge swarm of male ants doing in your room? Well, if you haven't seen the past two episodes on this channel, I've moved temporarily into a cottage right smack in the middle of a tropical rainforest in the mountains. I featured this place in the past on this channel in our Stingless Bee episode. But this mountain rainforest cottage is where I'll have to be living for the next few months. It's quite a cute place with vintage Victorian furniture pieces, old books, stained glass windows, and fresh flowers. I gotta say, it's different living out here with a literal rainforest right outside my window. But as a nature lover and lover of insects, it's a true haven. I was no longer in the city housing ants in a container at my condo, but was now clearly in the wilderness and a guest living in my own container within the ants domain this time. Which explains why a swarm of male ants appeared in my room. These males must have emerged from some random hole in the wall or opening in the window. So my hopes were that the male and queen elates within the jar would mate overnight and that the queens would then proceed to shed their wings and begin the colony founding process. Why do I hope for this? Well, I wanted to try to start a new ant colony, of course. An ant colony of these awesome large ants from the rainforest. And so in the morning, after some sorting and segregation, I organized all the queens into test tubes and you won't believe the amazing sight I saw. By morning, this was what was left in the jar. As expected, it was full of dead male ants. Oh, and a male ant that was pretty close to dying. Poor guy. 
but I hoped that at least one of these males had mated with at least one of the queens overnight. The bottom of the jar was also full of the shed wings of the queens. This was also a good sign, though wing shedding isn't a for sure sign of mating. But AC family, have a look at our spread of gorgeous queen ants. We've got a lot. Let's lay them out to have a better look at them, shall we? Here we have 14 test-tubed queen ants. I've divided the queens into two groups. On the left are queens with their wings still intact. As mentioned, shedding of wings isn't a for sure indicator of fertilization from breeding, so these queens may still have mated and might found their own colonies, keeping their wings on for the rest of their lives, or as this last queen here did, shed the wings on a later date. Now in terms of species, these huge ants are a type of carpenter ant belonging to the genus Campanatus. I'll have to have an expert ID them to determine their exact species. Perhaps they may even be a newly discovered species. Who knows? On the right are the queens who did decide to shed their wings. There's a good chance that one of these queens may have mated. Which brings me now, AC family, to a little surprise in one of the wingless queen's test tubes. Have a look. Eggs. Two little ant eggs. This queen wasted no time at all and had begun laying. Now we'll have to wait and see if these eggs actually end up developing into workers. And if they do, it means our queen here had mated, either in the jar or at some point before I actually caught her. I had high hopes, AC family. What luck to be able to be present during their nuptial flight. I hope to be able to raise a colony from one of these queens. If several of these queens end up being fertilized, I'll just take one and release the others back into the wild, or offer them up for adoption through the Global Ant Nursery Project at AntsCanada.com. Speaking of which, if any of you would like to start an ant colony from raising a pregnant queen ant like this, you don't have to move out into the rainforest and wait for a nuptial flight to happen in your room. If you're from the US, Canada, Europe, and Northern Asia, it is currently prime nuptial flight season for many ant species. Just try to look for queen ants wandering around on the ground, preferably without wings, but if you find some with wings, catch those too, because they still might be mated or may break off their wings later. And place them within a test tube setup like you see here. Or you can visit AntsCanada.com and click on the Queen Ants for Sale tab, aka the GAN project, to find live ant colony sellers in your city to provide you ant colonies. Also, while you're there, be sure to pick up my ultimate ant keeping handbook at our shop, which will explain everything you need to know about raising an ant colony. I also have an entire ant tutorial playlist on this channel, all free to watch, to help you get started on your ant keeping journey. I would love for you guys to keep ants with me, and right now is the best time to get started. As for me, I'll surely keep an eye on these queens and update you guys on their progress. In the meantime, the best thing to do for them now is to place them away in the dark to give them some privacy. Not all queens in nature successfully go on to found their own colonies, but let's hope we get lucky and scored a fertilized queen among these 14 gorgeous maidens. The next night, there weren't quite as many male ants flying around the lights of my room, which only told me I had truly moved into this rainforest cottage at just the right time on the exact eve of the Carpenter Ant's annual nuptial flight. It was sheer serendipity, and I saw it as a blessed welcome gift from the rainforest. But as I began to drift off to sleep that night, dreaming about what other cool ants and creatures I'd stumble upon next, the rainforest actually gave me its second welcome gift, and one I'd never forget. It was crawling on my hand, and I just thought it was one of the male ants but to my surprise, it wasn't. Ah! 
AC family, did you enjoy today's episode? You guys will be mind blown by all the creatures coming up in the episodes following this one, including the utter beast that ended up biting me in bed. Can you guys guess what it was? It hurts so bad. Living in the middle of the rainforest is truly a different thing. You won't want to miss this continuing real life adventure living in the tropical rainforest. So be sure to smash that subscribe button and bell icon now and hit all so you get notified at every upload. Also, don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really mean a lot to me, guys. Thank you. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would like to watch extended play footage of our newly caught Queen Ants, go check them out. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Two weeks ago, we asked, where do you guess we're moving to next week? Congratulations to the three scoots who answered, you're temporarily moving to the same place you videoed Stingless Bees. Congratulations, The Three Scoots. You just won a free ultimate and keeping handbook from our shop. In this week's AC Question of the Week, we ask, what do you think bit my hand while in my bed? Leave your answer in the comments section and you could also win a free ultimate and keeping handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.